Other questions? Yeah. Typically, how long does it take to house train one of these dogs off the track? Oh, about a day. <laughs> <laughs> if that, yeah. Yeah. They're Well, but you know, for the time that they were kenneled and living that life, they were always going to the bathroom outside. Essentially, they've been crate trained. So it is true that you, you know, you kind of want to monitor them for the first few days. And the males, because they've only just been neutered before coming into a home, uh, may try a little bit of scent marking. But um, usually house training is, is very, very easy. And you know, these dogs are getting a little bored and a little restless, but this is really what they do. <laughs> they sleep. They lounge. That's what they do. And um, so uh, they're very, very easy. And you'll hear people sometimes say, you know, greyhounds are like potato chips. You can't have just one. <laughs> so, and their situation is very compelling. You, and you see a dog that, that evolves and changes uh, over the months and years, in some cases, um, and you realize, my gosh, you know, look at what this poor dog had to live through. And you're, I think we're as grateful as these dogs can be grateful for, for sharing our lives with them. Um, they're very, very special. Um, so I think we feel privileged to have them in our homes. Yes. Do you give them some fast exercise at some points? Or you mentioned that yours is still fast. <laughs> Good question. Um, probably the biggest myth about greyhounds is that they need a lot of exercise. And it's a natural thought to have. They're athletes, after all. Um, but this is where I like to use that cat analogy. Because, uh, and then, that's it. That's it. So. It's not like they need that exercise just to be content and happy around the house. Um, they, they, they really do this most of the time. Most of them are just done with the running thing. Yeah. <laughs> they got yeah. Yeah. Might not even chase rabbits in the backyard. He would rather ride in a car than go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> Take him out, the first thing he does is go to the car. <laughs> <laughs> The, the one challenge that we had with Jalen, and she's just been so easy, um, is stairs. She, she didn't know how to do stairs, and it did take her two months of every day placing her feet on the treads on the stairs. Um, but um, I thought, oh, great, now we've gone up the stairs. How long will it take us to learn to go down the stairs? And it was an hour. <laughs> she just went down. There's a, there's a great YouTube video that shows a greyhound who only learned to go up the stairs backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, goes up the stairs backwards. <laughs> um, they're about typical for their, for their weight and size. They tend to live to be about 12 to 14 years of age. And um, they weigh between 60 to 80 pounds, roughly. There's some that might be a little smaller, a little bigger. Um, Hi, like you, you're pretty big. Yeah. Cindy is uh, Cindy's about 65 pounds. People tend to think of them as a giant breed because they're long and lanky, but they really aren't. And they can curl up into a very tiny little ball. Yeah. But they also just love to just do this, sprawl. Yes, cockroach position too. They, um, they have very thin coats. They have a thin hair coat, virtually no body fat. And uh, what that does mean is, and they have a fairly high metabolism, I should add. What this means is that they don't handle temperature extremes really well. So they get hot very easily, um, and they can get cold. Um, but you have to probably be just so careful if they are running at high speed in some spot where you can have them do that, that they don't just bang into something because they tear, their, they can, their skin can tear easily because they don't have the protective fur coat and uh, thicker skins. Um, so, and, and oftentimes you will see them come off the track with some scarring in different places. And Cindy has had scars um, when, when we adopted her, and so did Woody, our, our, another one of our greyhounds. So, uh, 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Carol, who's a, an adoption counselor, who's out actually over in adoptions right now, her dog Luke, he's missing a toe. You know, he broke his toe. And, and that's what happens. You know, there are pile-ups at the track. There's no, jo there's no jockey on their back. They're just running at high speed. And if somebody gets tripped up, they can all just pile up. They can crash into the, you know, the railing. They, they can get very badly injured, and vets have to come out and euthanize them right there. So um, that, that, that's not uncommon at all. Other questions? Yeah. The, um, I mean, I presume that the state or the cities or whatever that have these tracks make money. Yes. From yes. But they don't have any kind of regulation of them? Uh, dog racing is, is regulated at the state level. And so, yes, the states do share in the winnings in the sense that there, you know, there are taxes. And so, that, you know, the, the states benefit from having dog racing there. Um, and there are regulatory commissions, racing commissions, or the, it may fall under the auspices of gambling altogether. Um, that, so there are officials whose job it is to make sure that, you know, that they're complying with whatever state regulations exist. But it doesn't get a lot of attention. It really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it's really handled on a state-by-state -state basis in terms of what's required. Uh, for the care and treatment of these dogs. And really the focus is gambling. You know, it's gambling. That's what it's really all about. Well, I think, I think that's probably going to do it for us. Um, I want to thank you guys for coming. Um, I'm going to tell the rest of us who are here that in case the big dog park is uh, open, we might all wander over there with our dogs to see if they could do a little running around. And um, so if you're interested in seeing a greyhound do more than just uh, lounge, that's an opportunity to, to, to do that. So, um, they come in all colors. They do. They, 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 they're, I, I think, I've tried to think of any other breed besides other sighthounds like whippets and such that that has that same variety of colors, and I can't think of any. Even something, Akitas come in, are a breed that comes in many different color patterns, but they don't come in a blue, Isn't there a, which is really gray. 50-something or 60-something color combinations? Could be, could be. Yeah, so Brindle, Brindle, um, the party colors and the solid colors like this, yeah. In all different colors. Yeah, really, we do. <laughs> anyway. Well, thank you all very much, and um, um, 